confusion clearing that followed a succession of explosions at the Pacific Engineering and Production Company plant in Henderson, Nevada. That's about 15 miles southeast of Las Vegas. Terry Drinkwater in Los Angeles narrates our report. The series of massive explosions demolished the plant where additives for NASA's space shuttle rocket fuel were produced. The blast shaking home video cameras miles away. Oh, it just blew again. It just blew again. Gonna be a big bang in a minute. Told ya. Authorities tonight fear several near the plant may have been killed. There's confusion. Many workers and nearby residents are unaccounted for. Nevada's governor tonight said a death toll of nine is unconfirmed. But more than 150 were injured. Flying debris struck workers being evacuated from an adjacent candy factory. There were concussions, broken arms and legs, and many broken eardrums. Got out of our car and started walking, and the explosions just blew straight up in the air. First blast took off, leveled me, and I started running, and that was the end of it. Windows were shattered some miles away. Walls buckled, and doors were blown off their hinges in a nearby housing development. Meanwhile, toxic smoke continued continued to billow above the disaster area. Favorable winds kept the worst of it away from the more populous area of Las Vegas. But the Green Valley subdivision of Henderson, population 25,000, was evacuated. Meanwhile, residents over a wide area were ordered to stay indoors. Well, we had a lot of people in the plant. We had a lot of people in the, uh, in the offices. The owner of the plant uh, said a small fire started first. He had 10 minutes, he said, to evacuate the 108 employees before the first blast occurred. Most ran to safety. This was a disaster, said a fire chief, but it could have been much worse. In Nevada, four powerful explosions have leveled a rocket fuel plant. At least nine people have been killed, as many as 200 more have been injured, and others are still missing. As ABC's Charles Murphy reports, the blast had an effect miles away. It just blew again. Thick clouds of smoke and toxic gases rose from the site of the blast. A plant that makes an oxidizer used in the solid fuel system of the space shuttle. Four explosions destroyed the plant, also a nearby candy factory, knocked out windows and doors for miles around and shook Las Vegas 10 miles away. A plant spokesman said a piece of equipment failed and caught on fire. The plant in the town of Henderson, 25,000 people were evacuated. Stay away from glass. Watch the cloud. If it starts coming, try to get out of it. It's toxic. At schools, there was pandemonium on the playground. Get on the first bus. I hear from my sister and my mom and dad. I don't know where they are. They could be anywhere. <laughs> the percussion was unbelievable. You could... You seen it, and then all of a sudden, you could just 20 seconds later feel it, and it just you could see it coming across the desert. The highway to Las Vegas was choked with traffic. The evacuation of the plant had started 10 minutes before the first explosion. Workers were hit by flying fragments, and some were burned. They ran in all directions into the surrounding desert. About 200 are Henderson, still on. Nevada are investigating the cause of a series of explosions that leveled a rocket fuel plant. These pictures, taped on a home video camera, show the force of the blast, which killed one person. More than 250 other people were injured, and homes and businesses as far as 15 miles away were damaged. The plant where the explosions happened makes a city's tallest building. Observers say it looks like the towering inferno. NASA says here. it won't delay the already troubled shuttle program. Spencer? It's Thursday morning. Uh, May 5th to date. I'm Charles Gibson again. Nice to have you with us. Uh, were your wake-up call this morning That's up right. in Adam. <laughs> and in the next few weeks, uh, virtually every American household is going to receive this pamphlet. Los Angeles was lit with flame during the night. Several lower floors burned out of control for hours. There were 40 cleaning people and guards in the building when the fire began. One was killed. Others were lifted off the roof by helicopter. And still others made their way out of the building through thick smoke. I don't know. The smoke came out. The 
fire is under control. Firefighters are certain now that everyone who was inside is accounted for. In southeast Louisiana, and they say they have accounted for everyone thought to be missing or hurt in a series of explosions yesterday at a rocket fuel plant. One person was killed and some 200 were injured. Brian Rooney has that story from outside Las Vegas. There was time for most of the workers to get out before a series of explosions ripped through the rocket fuel plant. After a piece of equipment failed, fire burned inside the building for 40 minutes before going out of control. Employees literally ran for their lives. At that time and point, the only thing was, was self-preservation. Get going. Some of the workers were burned and cut by flying glass and debris. The impact was felt throughout Las Vegas and up to 20 miles away. The windows were broken in an entire row of stores. Even the doors were blown out of homes several miles from the accident. All, all my windows, pictures broken, chandeliers broken, screen doors broken, doors set ajar, won't close. The percussion was unbelievable. You could, you seen it, and then all of a sudden you could just, 20 seconds later, feel it, and it just, you could see it coming across the desert. There was panic among children at a local school. Police and sheriff's deputies went house to house in nearby neighborhoods, warning residents of continuing danger. Police officers, anybody home? The fuel plant was leveled and a neighboring candy factory also destroyed. The plant made an oxidizer used in solid rocket boosters, including the space shuttle. Officials involved with the shuttle oh. say Ammonium chloride, toxic. The city of Henderson was evacuated. <laughs> Homes, businesses, schools. Anxious people hearing reports of hundreds of injured, unable to locate loved ones for long hours. Well, then nothing should be said until somebody knows what the heck is going on. Girls, you okay? How are you getting home? By nightfall, people were back in their homes, a curfew imposed by police to guard against the possibility of looting. And at the site, rescue workers almost afraid to believe that many more dead would not be found marveled that so many people did escape. The first order of business this morning is making sure that there will be no more problems relating to the chemicals at the site. And then, of course, there is finding out exactly what happened, probably a chain reaction begun by a mechanical failure. Bob? Reed, thanks. And outside New Orleans... conquering of Mount Everest. Ten climbers from Japan, Nepal, and China stood on the summit to mark the 35th anniversary of the first Everest conquest by Sir Edmund Hillary. And as Keith Miller reports, they broadcast their triumph to the earth 29,028 feet below. The extraordinary view is from the highest point on earth. <laughs> no one was ever certain they would make it this far, but the climbers finally reached the peak and broadcast the event live. <laughs> The three-nation expedition, in a combination of endurance, courage, and technology, took live cameras where they have never been before. And it was never easy. The team of cameramen took five and a half hours just to climb the last 500 feet up to the peak. At times, the view appeared unearthly. The wind, blowing at 45 miles an hour, kept temperatures at 30 below zero. The expedition set a record by successfully conquering the mountain from two sides, cross-traversing and heading down the other way. This was the most ambitious and costly expedition since Everest was first conquered in 1953. Only 209 people have ever stood upon the summit, and none of them ever had an audience. Keith Miller, NBC News, Tokyo. Trip through the Pacific Engineering Company rocket fuel plant shattered windows and cracked the walls of buildings as far away as 15 miles. Mr. Phil Yoder, who's still in Henderson, was less than 100 yards away from the Pacific Engineering plant when the first explosion hit. We're glad to see that you're alive, Mr. Yoder, and thank you for being with us. What happened when it went? Well, it, it just everything just like dust and everything was just blowing from behind us. You, you couldn't look back. It was just... It, it was, the, the concussion was something else. Were you already on the run at that yeah. point? Yes, we were already on the run. We'd already left the plant. We were just in a dead run across the desert trying to get away from it. What were you running from? I mean, how much warning did you have? Did you see smoke or was there a fire or was there a noise? Uh, 
No, we were. Uh, I was working on a piece of machinery when the uh, initial blast took place, and it, it blew all the starts down out of our air conditioning ducts and everything. And and I come down off the machinery to figure out what was going on, and somebody was running through the warehouse yelling at us to get get out of the plant because uh, the plant next to us was on fire. And uh, when we got outside, I just seen that the the plant was really going, was really engulfed real real fast, and and it was just really going. So we just took off as fast as we could out through the desert. When it blew, did it get you airborne? Uh, not me, myself. I was kind of behind a building. It, it, it must have shaded a little bit of the blast, but everybody kind of around me was kind of, you know, falling down. And, and, and some people had said that they had actually been, been knocked up in the air and, and then back down on the ground. You're a lucky young man. Yes, very lucky. Let me ask you to stay right there for a second, because also with us in Henderson is Bob Leinbach. Mr. Leinbach is press information officer for the Clark County Fire Department. Good morning to you, Mr. Leinbach. Good morning. Can you tell me how many are still missing or unaccounted for? Well, since about midnight, we've got one that's unaccounted for uh, from the plant. Uh, we think it's an office worker, but we can't be sure at this hour. Are all the fires out? Is, 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 is the threat totally gone? Uh, all the fires are not out. We've had some small rain and hot spots um, throughout the evening. Uh, they haven't been worth our uh, risk to get in and try to knock them down because they weren't going anywhere or threat to anybody. And as soon as we get a, uh, daylight, we'll get in there and uh, finish putting those out as well. We'll start the neutralization process of those dangerous chemicals. What about the air quality? Have those dangerous clouds been dissipated? We've had uh, EPA testing on a regular basis since uh, late yesterday, and there have been no indications of any real serious threat uh, in this area from uh, toxic chemicals. What's the general nature of the injuries of those who, who are still hospitalized? Uh, from my understanding, it is that uh, it's been mostly lacerations and cuts and, uh, I guess, concussions or uh, the general impact of either glass or, or being thrown against some other immovable type object. Mm. Mr. I'm not real. I'm not real familiar with any real serious injuries. Although I wouldn't be surprised if there aren't some. Yeah, we're very grateful for this fact. But Mr. Leinbach, why isn't the death toll worse? What was the question? Why isn't the death toll worse? <clears throat> I suppose because most, if not all, the people in the plants were out when the explosion actually occurred. Uh, I've noticed that in some parts of the uh, area, there's a great deal of destruction. In other parts, there's almost none. So I suppose the people were in the right place at the right time. Mm. An unidentified worker has said this plant had a recent history of small fires over the last 18 months. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I'm really not aware of the history that's occurred uh, before yesterday, and I really couldn't comment because I, I don't know. I, I'm just not aware of it. Yeah. I'm sure as we investigate into the building and investigate it, uh, we'll be able to confirm or clarify these kind of uh, observations. Should we think it's strange that a plant with such uh, dangerous chemicals was located in a fairly populous area? I mean, this third largest area of, of Nevada. Uh, I think that uh, the population is really not all that close to the, to the, the, to the facility. Uh, you know, the potential is always there for uh -huh. uh, for a disaster, and I think that we're fortunate it hasn't happened, but I don't, I don't know that we're located that close to that many residences, quite frankly. Mr. Yoder, have you and your and your neighbors out there always been aware of, of the danger here or, or of the materials this plant was dealing with, or did this come as kind of a shock to you? Well, I, I knew about the, the causticness of what they had over there, but I wasn't really aware of, of the, ex, you know, explosive, you know, how fast it would be to go up. I just, I was told when I first came out here that it, that it wasn't, Ex, you know, explodable because they had to put it together with something else to make it into rocket fuel, to well, make it combustible. As we've noted all morning, it could have been much worse. Gentlemen, the, in the flames. The area around the plant was evacuated. Officials say the explosion occurred in the process of manufacturing gasoline. The investigation continues in Henderson, Nevada this morning. A rocket fuel plant exploded there yesterday afternoon with tremendous force felt some 200 miles away. It leveled an entire industrial park leaving a 400-foot crater and spewing toxic fumes. We spoke just a few moments ago with one of the first firefighters to arrive on the scene. When uh, we first got there, uh, because of the uh, three explosions that occurred, it would appear that uh, more explosions were imminent. We did not fight the fire, and our uh, primary concern was the uh, evacuation of residents for about the first mile and a half around the fire. One person was killed in the blast. More than 270 others were injured, mostly by flying glass and debris. A miracle 
a miracle that only one person was killed after a rocket fuel plant exploded with the force of an earthquake. It happened near Las Vegas and was felt 200 miles away. Peter Van Sant has our report. Oh, it just blew again. It just blew again. It's gonna be a big bang in a minute. morning we'll try to determine what caused a series of explosions at the Pacific Engineering Chemical Plant near Las Vegas, which injured more than 270 people, damaged hundreds of homes, gutted a nearby marshmallow plant, and left many residents in shock. Got out of our car and started walking, and the explosions just blew straight up in the air. Unbelievable. Flash before the explosion, it was, it was unreal. Oh, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Overnight, small fires continued to burn at the plant, which made chemicals for rocket fuel. The entire area around the plant resembles a war zone. Overturned cars, debris everywhere, and the chemical plant reduced to smoldering wreckage. Fire officials believe that all the chemical plant employees are accounted for, but the search for possible victims continues. Breaking down the sections as we go through it. And go, there's some debris that's, that's in there that's over 10 feet in height. A curfew was enforced in damaged neighborhoods around the plant overnight following reports of looting. Some National Guard troops patrolled the streets. Today, officials will be totaling up the damages, which will run into the tens of millions of dollars. The small town of Henderson has been declared a disaster area. But many residents today are saying it was a miracle that more people weren't killed in the explosions. Peter Van Sant, CBS News. An Henderson. industrial park in Henderson, killing one person, injuring more than 250. The blasts were so powerful, they shattered windows in Las Vegas 20 miles away. Most of the injuries came from flying glass. The explosions and fire are being blamed on an equipment malfunction. The scene was almost identical in Norco. This is the new kid on the block at Easy Loader. This robot is a mechanical version of a human arm. As you can see, it can move in almost any direction. The boat trailer company will put this flexibility to use and welding its trailer parts. This is a job that used to be done by this man and several other workers. But now they've been trained to load and operate the robot. It's going to take all the welders we have here to run the machine. So he's got to load and unload it, and it's just taking away the monotonous uh, welding that we do what we're doing before. Easy Loader says that's one of the big advantages of having the $135,000 machine. It does monotonous and boring tasks and does them exactly the same every time. The robot's not only precise, but it's also very fast. It can put out the same amount of work as three welders. It will increase our production. We'll become more efficient and uh, possibly a little more competitive and with a better quality product. If the robot proves successful here in Spokane, Easy Loader will eventually set up similar machines in its three other manufacturing plants. These are robots with unlimited capabilities. Wallace Reynolds, Krem 2 News. Investigators confront mystery in the embers. In Los Angeles, fuel plant left one dead, more than 200 injured. It over in minutes, but the fallout from this disaster will continue for years. Nevada's governor today asked for federal emergency funds to rebuild, and he and everyone else was saying it was a miracle that only one man was killed. There were heroes inside the plant who tried desperately to put out the fire. When I heard the first explosion, I dropped the hose, and I ran towards the west, towards the desert. Did you think that was the end? Oh, I, I did. I did. I, I said a prayer and everything. While officials began damage estimates, today those who lived through it could not erase the horror of yesterday from their minds. Paul Morris lived just a mile and a half away. You show oh, me? it was one hell of a concussion. It just threw me back like this. We just Which bought this house. We didn't sign the papers. Yeah, they were going to sign the papers yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. The Harris family is going to stay. Others aren't so sure. It throwed everything on that wall just clear across the room. So. Uh, I knew they were working with chemicals, but I never dreamed to take it, wipe the whole city out. Damage to school buildings was put at three million. Gail Dixon is an assistant principal. The whole building moved about two inches towards Boulder City. Some of the lights in the classroom started falling from the ceiling and boards and things. And my friend, she was so scared we were in the auditorium that she passed out. It felt like the Russians were attacking or something, like a bomb dropping. You'll need to call the claims office for that, sir. Many insurance policies don't cover this kind of a disaster. 
Fenders broke out windows and split door frames. Knocked me over. Knocked I was standing her on in the butt. corner when, look, wondering, you know, what happened. But she wasn't down for long. Catherine Crosby reopened her music store this afternoon. Tonight, only a few of the 200 injured remain hospitalized. And down at the El Dorado, the regulars were back at it, most believing that all things considered, this town is a very lucky place. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Henderson, Nevada. That the rocket fuel plant had long been a safety hazard. The workers knew they were working in a, in a, in a time bomb environment, and they, and they did everything they could to, to try to make it safer. They pushed the company and pushed the company, but without laws, without standards, it was very hard to get the company to move at all. First of all, I don't know whether it's true. I mean, I think that's what we got to find out first when it, when these reports were submitted. The Pacific Engineering plant self-destructed in a series of three thunderous explosions. Workers claim the fire started in what's called the batch building, where volatile chemicals are mixed to produce a rocket fuel additive. There was an explosion, and fire raced through the entire facility. Shock waves broke windows 12 miles away in Las Vegas. Gosh, they're calling on fire. When it got out of hand, it just, I've been there for eight years. I've been around the stuff. I knew it was time to go. There's just nothing we could do. Batch dryer's on fire. You know, we have small little fires all the time, never down again. We didn't think nothing of it, and it, it started to get out of hand. Workers had long complained that the Pacific Engineering Company was unsafe, that small fires were commonplace, and that the company dragged its feet in making safety improvements. They had all different types of warnings, from the top to the bottom. And what did they do? Basically nothing. As management, we are convinced that neither the company's operating processes nor its product caused this incident. Pacific Engineering is one of two facilities in the U.S. that makes a rocket fuel additive used to power the space shuttle and the nation's ballistic missiles. Some experts are questioning whether this Kerr-McGee plant will be able to produce enough fuel to maintain the shuttle's schedule. We are right now doing a study to determine what sort of um, incremental increases we might be able to make in our capacity at our facility if it becomes necessary for us to do so. Meanwhile, the search for a cause goes on amid concerns that this disaster may be felt well beyond the Las Vegas area all the way to the nation's space program. It seemed to take forever. The climbers struggled up the mountain burdened by equipment, fatigue, and the elements. It was 30 degrees below zero, and a constant 45-mile-an-hour wind kept them off balance. I think he get lost. There was a scare when one climber was separated from the group for half an hour. I think now he's, I think he's okay. A frozen camera connection threatened to sabotage the promised picture from the peak. Then there was an image. <laughs> the cameraman, Susumu Nakamura, said he could keep taking this picture forever. I think this is the great, greatest event in the history of climbing. For the first time, an expedition scaled the summit from two directions simultaneously from Tibet on the north and Nepal on the south. They traversed Everest summit and headed down in opposite directions. The drama was shown live in Japan where the view from Everest competed for the attention of shoppers in downtown Tokyo. I think it's great. Carrying a camera over there. And they are brave. Brave, yeah. And for the Nippon Television Network, which financed the project, what was originally just a TV spectacular became a feat of mountaineering. The challenge of high altitude climbing was revealed as never before. And the hardship, so evident in the mountaineer's ascent, was justified in the glory of reaching the top. Keith Miller, NBC News, Tokyo. この俺上がりました。